Hi everyone! Welcome back to Science at Home and for today we're going to be exploring about the nature of the atom and its structure. So as we all know, the atom is considered as one of the building blocks of matter which is made up of the electrons, protons, and neutrons. But how did we come up to that structure of the atom that we all know today? Now we're going to be trying to look on some historical perspectives in order for us to identify how did we come up to the atomic structure that we all know today. So it all began during the 5th century BC when a Greek philosopher named Democritus coined the term atomos in order to describe the building blocks of matter in which he describes atomos as an indivisible or indestructible structure. Now the term atom that we use today to describe the building blocks of matter came from the word atomos. So after the time of Democritus, it was only during the early 1800s when another scientist attempted to describe how are the particles of matter being described. So it is in the name of John Dalton, in particular during, during 1808, where he formulated the modern atomic theory in which John Dalton described atom as a solid sphere just like of a billiard ball. Now the modern atomic theory made by John Dalton is made up of different postulates in which he tried to explain the different properties of the atom. So the first one is that elements are composed of extremely small particles called the atoms in which the term atom was coined from that Greek term made by Democritus, atomos. But this first postulate made by Dalton was already disproven simply because that the atom is already made up of different subatomic particles which are the electrons, the protons, and the neutron. Second is that all atoms of a given element are identical meaning they have the same size, mass, and chemical properties. But this was also disproven simply because of the idea of the isotopes. So later on, we're going to be discussing what our isotopes really are. Okay, third, he also said that compounds are composed of atoms of many elements in which it is made up within a fixed ratio. But that was also disproven due to the idea of the law of multiple proportion. So according to this, any compounds that are made up of the same elements can have different ratio. Let's have, for example, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. So these compounds are made up of carbon and oxygen. So as you can see, carbon monoxide is made up of one atom of carbon and one atom of oxygen, in which its ratio of oxygen to carbon is equivalent to one because it is in the one is to one ratio. On the other hand, carbon dioxide is a compound with a chemical formula of CO2. So meaning it is made up of one atom of carbon and one atom of oxygen. So ideally speaking, for every one molecule of carbon dioxide, there are two atoms of oxygen for every one atom of carbon. So meaning there is a two is to one ratio for the carbon dioxide. And lastly, chemical reactions involves only the separation, the combination, or rearrangement of the atoms. But this was also disproven due to the idea of the law of conservation of mass, in which it clearly states that the mass or the total atoms within a given reactant is equal to the number of atoms within a given product. So this can be exemplified through a balanced chemical equation. But how did we come up to the different subatomic particles? Now let us try to look on the historical perspective. Let us first start with J.J. Thomson. So J.J. Thomson is the one who performed the cathode ray experiment in which this led to the discovery of the electrons. So based on the findings of the cathode ray experiment made by J.J. Thomson, so he found out that electrons or the negatively charged particles are embedded within a positively charged matter. So the atomic model made by J.J. Thomson is somewhat similar to a raisin bread or a plum pudding model. So simultaneous with the work of J.J. Thomson, we have here Robert Millikan. So Robert Millikan is famous for his Millikan oil drop experiment in which this experiment led to the discovery of the electron charge. So this is the setup made by Robert Millikan. As we can see right here, all of the oil droplets are only suspended within the positively charged plate. So this made him conclude with the idea that electrons are negatively charged. So after the discovery of the electron, one scientist have proved the presence of the other subatomic particles. And this is within the work of Ernst Ruder for during 1910, in which he performed the alpha scattering experiment or the gold foil experiment, in which this experiment led him to the discovery of the the atom's nucleus. So as you can see right here, so the atom's nucleus is the one found on the core center of the atom. And it is represented by the blue big dot found in the center. And as you can see also in the diagram, the electrons represented by the red dot are freely moving around the nucleus. So what happened during the alpha scatter experiment made by Rutherford? So as you can see right here, the setup he made was 
composed of the gold foil, a thin gold foil that was placed within the center and he has an alpha particle emitter beam that emits alpha radiation. So these alpha radiations was passed through a slit leading to the gold foil. So as illustrated within the diagram, not all of the alpha rays has passed through the gold foil but rather some of it has bounced back. So this gave him an idea in which that there is something within the center of the atom. Thus, concluding that there is the presence of the nucleus. As illustrated right here, so this is the nuclear model of the atom made by Rutherford. So as we all know, so the nucleus of the atom is made up of the proton and the neutron. But there are also some scientists that also led to the discovery of these subatomic particles. So beginning with Eugene Goldstein during 1886, in which he performed also the cathode ray tube experiment but in reverse in which this led to the discovery of the protons or the positively charged particle. But it was only during the 1930s when a scientist named James Chadwick was able to find out the presence of the neutrons or the neutrally charged particles. So as you can see right here, these are the subatomic particles of the atoms. So as we all know, it is made up of the electrons or the negatively charged particles together with the protons or the positively charged particles and the neutrons or the neutrally charged particles. So as illustrated in the diagram, so the electrons are freely moving around the nucleus in which the nucleus is comprised of both the protons and the neutrons. So there are some things that we need to consider in terms of the number of the subatomic particles. First is that the number of electrons is the same with the number of protons. But this is only applicable in terms of neutrally charged atoms. And lastly, the sum of the protons together with the neutrons is equivalent to its atomic mass. Now the atomic mass is considered as the mass of the entire nucleus of the atom. So let's have some examples with regards to the subatomic particles. Let us go to the first row in which the number of protons as indicated right here is 8 and the atomic mass or symbolized by the big letter Z is equivalent to 18. Now in order to find out the number of electrons, remember that the number of protons is always the same with the number of electrons. So therefore, if the number of protons is 8, so also the number of electrons is 8. And in order for us to identify the number of neutrons, so we need to subtract the number of protons to the atomic mass simply because that the atomic mass is composed of both the protons and the neutrons. 18 minus 8 okay, is equivalent to 10. So within this atom, there are 10 neutrons. So in the second row, so our given is that the number of electrons is 20 and the number of neutrons is 19. So as previously mentioned, the number of protons is always the same with the number of electrons. So therefore, the number of protons right here is also 20 simply because that the number of electrons is 20. And next, in order to find out the atomic mass, we need to add the number of protons to the number of neutrons. So 20 plus 19 is 39. And for the last row, so we have here 13 for both the number of protons and we have the given value of the atomic mass which is 27. And we need to find out the number of neutrons. So in order to find out the number of neutrons, simply subtract the number of protons from the atomic mass. So 27 minus 13 is 14. So the table right here summarizes the different properties among the subatomic particles which includes the mass and the charge. So as seen in the table, so the protons and the neutrons has the same mass simply because that they are both found within the nucleus. But with regards to the electrical charge measured in columns, so both of the electrons and protons has the same magnitude, which is around 1.6 times 10 raised to the negative 19. However, they are different in terms of their unit charge, in which the electrons is a negatively charged particle, meanwhile the proton is a positively charged particle. Now let us go to the atomic notation. So the atomic notation is the manner of presenting the different subatomic particles within a given atom. So as you can see, it is represented by the letters A, Z, and X. So the X represents the atomic symbol in which this can be found within the periodic table of elements. So the Z represents the atomic number in which the atomic number is determined by the number of protons. And the atomic mass represented by letter A is the sum of the protons and the neutrons. And lastly, we have the idea of isotopes in which this refers to the set of atoms that has the same atomic number but of different atomic mass. So ideally within isotopes, so since they have the same atomic number, therefore they have the same number of protons. So like in this diagram, these are the isotopes of the hydrogen atom. So as we all know, hydrogen has an atomic number of 1. So therefore the number of protons in hydrogen is also equivalent to 1. But these isotopes of hydrogen has varying number of neutrons. Now we will continue our discussion of the atomic structure within the electronic structure of matter. So for the meantime, that concludes our episode for today. This has been your Sir Dave. Saying keep safe and always have fun learning science at home. Goodbye.